What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. New video. Today's video. Now, I haven't done the thumbnail yet. I do things kind of in reverse. Some people do the thumbnails first, build their thumbnail up, and then say, okay, that's boom. That's the idea. That's the story. I tend to get the idea, have a memory pop up, and just say, okay, let's go. I record, and then I build my thumbnail around it. I have a feeling this one is going to be called the most hated man in CDC. Something along those lines. Am I exaggerating? <clears throat> I don't think I am. Are there people that were more widely known, so therefore maybe more hated? Possibly. I know certain individuals, and I apologize that the tree is not turned on. I know some of you guys love the tree. The tree, I don't know how much longer it's going to be up. But um, I know some guys in prison, man, that, that, that were pretty damn despised. Their names were known and they were, they were despised. But this person that this story is about today had the ability, the uncanny ability to make everyone he comes in contact with or came into contact with dislike him almost instantly. That is something I had never, ever seen in prison. That takes some motherfucking talent. Keep it real. Unfortunately for me, he was my celly for a while. <laughs> and I've told stories about him. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll try to put a, a link right here to one of the stories. When he shit in his pants. How old? I asked him, how old are you, homie? Like. How is it possible that you shit in your pants? But anyways, like I said, I'll try to put the link up here and you guys can check that story out. So I'm going to I'm going to rehash a little bit of that story as far as the beginning. I'm meeting this dude. So I had a celly. My celly was from Squires Drive. He, he they did him dirty. He, he was on a violation. By the time he left the county, he was school. He had one. Well, I think. No, no, no. Excuse me. He had a little bit to go. He was in Wasco, had one week to go. On his violation. No, 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 no. I think it was two weeks. You can't parole from Pelican Bay. They don't allow you because of a couple uh, murders that happened when people paroled from there. You couldn't. You can't parole for there. So he had like two weeks left. They sent him to Pelican Bay. He did one week in Pelican Bay, and then they transferred him back down to, I think, Wasco. Just to mess with them, right? So my Sally from Squires Drive leaves. Right. <clears throat> I don't have a Sally. <clears throat> and in Pelican Bay, they don't just throw somebody in the cell. I don't know about now, but back then, there were so many murders happening in the shoe. There were people, you know, things happening in the cells on, on A yard and especially B yard. That they would give you what they would call a marriage chrono. You would have to sign a chrono that whoever comes into the cell you guys are both okay with it. And it was a way for the CDC to try to uh, eliminate their liability for who they put in your cell. The problem is, Rasa can't refuse a celly. I know the bottles down south, they cannot refuse a celly. They put somebody in your cell, come on in, homes. And uh, if something's wrong, there you go. That's your responsibility. Um. So anyways, they call me and they tell me, hey, you need to go to the, you need to go to the school area um, for a potential Sally, right? And like I said, you can't refuse Sally's. My homeboy, Mondo, was in the building next door. He was getting short to the house and it was my intention to move my homeboy in, right? But they called me to the school area and they're like, yeah, um, for a potential Sally and this and that. So I go down there. I'm on the walkway, which um, they had an escort. 
So they, they go, hey, what do you what do you what are you here for? And I go, I'm supposedly I got a side. They go, oh yeah, you gotta go in education. So they unlock the door. There was like five bottles there. All Rasa from Southern California, right? Excuse me. And um everybody's talking. And there was one dude, like, as soon as I walked in there, immediately. I said, I hope that's not him. In my head, I said, I hope that's not him. <clears throat> if you're Rasa from Southern California, you run with the Rasa from Southern California, you are going to be presentable at all times. You are going to be dressed sharp. It don't matter if it's your yard clothes. It don't matter if it's your chow hall clothes, your visiting clothes, but you will look professional because how you look is reflect reflection upon you amongst those in your ramfla. But to all the other factions, you are you are a reflection of the whole ramfla and what's above it. So you better not be walking around looking like a bum, looking dirty, disheveled. If you got hair, it better be maintained. If you have a shaved head, that better be maintained. Clothes are going to be clean, not all wrinkled up, not ripped up. You're going to take care of your appearance. Very important. So when I walked in, this vato had a beanie on, right? And you know how like when you when you grow, when you shave your head and the hair's growing back and it's kind of like like and so when you put your beanie on it's kind of like you you got to you have to work it down not that about them. He was like and how it feels that motherfucker was like I said oh shit when I walked in the hallway I was like oh shit He had pants on that were obviously too long and they were like under his shoe He wasn't tripping his pants were, I mean, his clothes were very disheveled. And out of everybody talking, I'm observing. I don't recognize not one of these dudes in the hallway. That I recall, I don't I don't recognize not one of them. Don't know them from nowhere. So I'm listening. Because I don't know which one's going to be my Sally, but I hope it's not this dirtbag. That's what I'm thinking, right? And then it becomes obvious <clears throat> that as they're talking and I'm listening, I'm leaning right there against the wall and I'm listening. It becomes obvious that this Vato, when he, he, he has a need to fit in, he keeps cutting people off in their conversation, something you don't do. Especially when you get around serious people, wait your fucking turn. Let them say what they got to say and you pick up where they left off. It couldn't be an issue if you keep cutting somebody off. Who the fuck are you? What What's so much more important than what you got to say than what I'm fucking talking about, right? So he's cutting people off. And I'm just listening. Eh? I'm just like, fuck it. Eh? Then the author winds up taking his beanie off, right? <sighs> he had cut marks from the razor. So now, now, obviously, you don't even know how to fucking shave your head. Sure enough, that's going to be my Sally. <laughs> that's fire. They come and they, they tell him, hey, man, you know, this, this is, man. And I was like, hey, uh, you don't got any homies? <laughs> I was like, you don't got any homies you want to move in with? Because I'm trying to move my homeboy. And he's like, hey, please, please, homie, can I just move in? I just want to get off a of fish roll, homie. And then if you got your homeboy moving in, like, I'll move, homes, but I, I go, yeah, well, come on, let's do this. So we sign the crown on. Um, he winds up moving in a couple hours later. And uh, I'm not going to lie, man. His first yard, they release yard, right? We go out to yard. And I've told you guys before. There's a fence between every two buildings. Five, six, seven, and eight, they leave the gate open. 
three and four, we can't go anywhere but only with three and four. We go out to yard. I get called to the fence where five and six block are at, right? Hey, shh, come here. All right. I walk over there. And they're like, hey, who the fuck is that Wapo right there? And I, in my head, like, I don't even want to turn around. I know who they're asking about. And I turn around, and I look. Oh, my God. And I see this Vato walking around with this. Again, his pants were, like, under his shoes. And he's walking on his pants. And I try to play dumb. I go, I go which Vato? And they go, that fucking, the dirtbag. He's not a homie, right? I was like, man, that's my fucking Sally. And they were like, no. Nah. I said, yeah. And they're like, homie, Vato's already looking at him. I said, I'm knowing. Like, I tried to ask him, like, hey, Holmes, you ain't going to fix your pants before he went out. He's like, nah, what's wrong with them? I said, barely nothing. So, this Vato went and played handball. Chasing the handball into the dirt area. His pants, did, it didn't matter that he was walking on his pants. <laughs> Ah, memories. You know, it took about, you know, I want to say like three days. Oh, by the way, after yard, what we do, we go in the cell, we bird bath, we wash our laundry, we hang our shit up, get new fresh clothes on, relax, wait for whatever's coming. Not this guy. This guy would take his pants off, roll them. They're not folding for five or four. Roll them into a ball and shove them into his locker and pull out a different pair and put them on. Oh, man. And I'm telling this story because there's people like this out there right now. There's. I hope you're watching. This Vato came from a level one. He worked his way up from a level one to a level four, 180. Not for anything violent. He had the stupidest write-ups. He's the one, he, he, he tried to brag about a pegada he did. Pegada he did. A stabbing, a sticking he did. He was in that sake for like a fist fight or some shit. Some stupid ass shit. And somebody had to go. And he said, I'll do it. They gave him a plastic piece that didn't even have a point on it. <laughs> this Vato's fucking incident report said that victim had multiple red wounds, red, red, red mark, multiple red marks. <laughs> I was like, and that's the thing. I don't know about any other group. I know the Raza from Southern California. If you get a write-up, it better not be for no bullshit. Why? Because you're getting bullshit write-ups. You're bringing heat to the pad. You're bringing heat to yourself, heat to your Sally, heat to the fucking tier, heat to the section. It's a waste of fucking time. If you're going to get a write-up... You want to carry, when you carry your paperwork around, you want to carry it around. And, and when you get somewhere, boom, this is something serious. This bottle serious. Not old dirtbag, red mark making motherfucker over here. But that was him. He and I did not get along for shit. I remember he had been there about three days and I was like, hey, hold on, Spencer, look, let me talk to you real quick. What's up? I said, look, Holmes, um, this is a prison. We're in Pelican Bay Beef Facility. I said, this is a prison, homie, where um, you do not want the spotlight on you unless it's for something good. And you have the spotlight on you right now. Break a razor. Cut your pants. Baby cuff them. 
fix your clothes so they're not so fucking disheveled and wrinkled and look like you just grabbed them out of the trash can. He said, if authors are so concerned about what I'm wearing, why don't they just give me something? I said, who the fuck are you that they're going to give you something? Though? Look at how you came on the yard, eh? So these are the kind of conversations we didn't talk um, well to each other. Um, he's the one um, at one point, and I don't like to use the term, but I'm going to use it because it's the, well, I'm not going to use it. He, he wrote in pen right here a title that, that has to be earned. It isn't earned after doing one thing. And it's an obligation once you uh, take that step to become that. And I'm not talking about a legend. I'm talking about the step before that. He wrote it. I see him in the mirror and I'm like, what is he fucking doing, man? Because he had a tattoo gun. He would put messed up tattoos all over himself. And in pen, he wrote that. And he turned around and looks at me and goes, hey, homie, will you tack this on me? And I said, fuck no. He said, why not? I said, you ain't earned it. What have you fucking done to have that on you? And then on your face? Like, that's a night buster. What have you done? And I told him, look, I'm not trying to be a fucking asshole, homie. Obviously, you don't know nothing about anything. Once you put that on you, no is not an option. You can never say no. And you would probably get hit immediately for putting that on you. The Vato put it on him out of spite. I also want to bring up a couple things about him. Um, he was a white dude. Shout out to the woods. He's not a wood. Shout out to the, wh the whites, the woods. He was white. He says he was half. I don't, I don't think he was. And he had been a tagger. And his tagging crew got forced to become a barrio. They were from South Central. He had some deep insecurities that were com like completely obvious upon meeting him. Like I said, when I went in that hallway, I knew like, oh, that is about to be fit in. So when he would tell me stories, you know, it was blatantly obvious. And then he was saying he was from a certain neighborhood. Then he gets a letter from his homeboy, and it's the same first part, but the last. So he was saying he was from something locos. His homeboy is writing him a letter and blocking it up. Something hood. I said, "Damn, homie, what is that? Are you guys that big? Like, you guys got clicks now? Or what? like, he was not the same body. I go, why does one? Why do you say locos and he says hood? You guys don't have the name down yet, or what?" Uh -huh. <clears throat> I never had a sense from him, though, that he had any coward in him. Um, but he did not fit in. We wound up catching a case together. Uh, there's a CO that has a channel. And I said his name wrong last time. I said Deganus. And then they, somebody corrected me. They're like, it's Dejanay. Dejeuner. I'm sure you probably watched all these channels. You ran up in our cell. Four building, C-section. This guy and I, you found weapons in the cell. This was after the riot. Now, I bring that up because this is how bad this Vato wanted to fit in. He still hadn't put in no work. Whatsoever came in as a level one was now level four made everyone around him dislike him. I have life in my mind. I'm never getting out. I'm dying in there. He has a date and the date. I think he had like 13 months to go, 14 months to go. Right. We, ca we catch this case. This dummy, I tell him, listen, homes, I'm going to take the rap for both of the weapons. Hell no, nah, homie. One, one was mine, one was yours. And I was like, fool, you're going to fuck around and catch life. If I catch life, I catch life. This dummy 
really, I think got more time for a weapon. I'm like, homie, I, they're both mine. I'm saying like, we're going to say that both of them were found on my bunk. Because in the report, they said they found both on my bunk. Right? It's not. But anyways. This bottle actually. To fit in. Wanted to go to the shoe. Wanted to catch time. For another stupid ass write up. We go to the oil and um, we wind up separating in the oil. They put us in the oil together and everybody knew like, hey, man, we got to get the homie a break. He's been stuck with that dude for like a year now. Right. So. I get pulled over to a section. Uh, my my Sally's uh, one of the bottles running the oil the homie from San Diego. So he's like, yeah, I want you over here with me. I don't know what who moved in with this guy over here but then i go later on we go to the shoe we leave i come back to the shoe later a few years later and he's there and he calls out to me and i'm like who's that and he goes it's so and so what's happening you know? he goes hey uh What's going on? This and he, like you don't carry conversations like that across pods in the shoe. And I was like, "Look, Holmes, I'm busy right now. I'll holler at you." The tear tender came out and he's like, "Hey, you know that fool?" I go, "Unfortunately, he was my celly for a long time." Man. And he's like, "Hey, Holmes, he is so fucking hated. Every one of the legends in that building, C two, hated his guts." There was one pod. This is amazing for the shoe. Anybody that's been a Pelican Bay shoe will, will attest to this. There was one pod, a pod. And it had not one single Southerner in it. They moved him in. <laughs> <laughs> he moved him in. They told him, hey, hold on. You need to go over there, Holmes. He pissed off the legends. He got into it with every single camarada there. But he couldn't have a celly. So it's easy. So. In the most. Cruel place. In the California Department of Corrections. Pelican Bay State Prison. Security housing unit. This bottle was by himself. And I'm sure they were hoping the doors would pop and somebody would kill him. That's how it is. They were trying to save his life by sticking him out there in no man's land. And he was still able to fucking annoy everyone around him. <laughs> Anyways, let me see. This is a long ass story. I apologize, man. Hope you guys enjoy it. Don't be that guy. Be you. Be who you are and be proud. Take pride in who you are. This Vato was disliked by everyone because he tried to be something he wasn't. When I was in the shoe with him, he was validated. Obviously for fucking stupid shit. Nobody knew him. There was not one single legend that was fucking with him. But that was his life's goal, his dream. So I know there's at least one of you guys listening right now. That's that guy. You're young right now, though. You haven't fallen, fallen into the traps that this dude placed in front of himself. Don't place any in front of you. Stay out the streets. Get a fucking education and a better life. That's it for today on this channel. I'm going to try to either go live right now on the small channel or, or, or do a, a reaction. Let's see. Stay tuned. With that said, everybody, please be safe, be smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out.